My name's Simon Carter. I've been shooting uh, rock climbing now professionally for about 16 years. The one by far most important thing for climbing photography is to become competent as a climber and have quite a bit of experience before you start trying to think about adding a camera and photography into the mix. Then you can start thinking about things that will help you improve your climbing photography. To me there's uh, many different elements that sort of add up to make a really good climbing photograph. You want to capture good action, but you also want to try and get a balance between the action and the landscape. Incorporating the whole holistic thing into the, into the image, as well as capturing the action, is, is to me the challenge. One of the, the greatest challenges in climbing photography is getting into position to get the angle that you want to get on the climb because often there's this theoretical place out in space that you really want to be to get this amazing perspective looking in on the climber and you just can't get to that very easily. I mean, you really want to be out seeing more of the wall and the perspective as the wall drops away. You know, over, over the years I've tried lots of different things. Sometimes you can jump out, but that's sort of a bit hit and miss. You, there's sometimes ways that you can rig a rope, like I have at Hanging Rock this afternoon with the, the tail end of the rope tied off to another cliff and you can pull yourself out. One of the other problems that you have with climbing photography is trying to get rid of camera shake and, uh, and just hold yourself in a position that's stable. So you've got to employ little tricks like uh, connecting your rope to the rock with protection so you're not swinging around in space. And I use a, a chest harness in addition to the normal waist harness and uh, that just helps me lean back and it takes a lot of my weight and that enables me to hold the camera steady and I find that pretty much essential for taking good climbing photographs. Later on this afternoon we're going to go over to Hanging Rock on the other side of the Gross Valley here and uh, it's a, a composition, an angle that I've been thinking about for about 12 years and I just kept thinking how great it would be if you could sort of be out in space, you know, maybe five or ten metres out from the wall you'd be able to really show the, this amazing orange wall and sitting high above the valley and just show that entire setting. So um, I spent about three days setting it up, rigging and getting the ropes in place and it looks like it should work pretty well. Here I am out at uh, Hanging Rock. Get a good view of the wall from here. I've got a bit of rigging here. I've got a, a rope above me here. Absailed down about 25 metres. I've got another rope off to the side here that enables me to pull to the right and change my angle from side to side. And, and then I've got this third rope here. It's a 90 metre rope stretched all the way across to uh, Hanging Rock there. And uh, that enables me to pull out from the wall and. Uh, that and the side rope here I can change my perspective really well and get all sorts of different angles and, I, and it gives me a very nice stable platform to, uh, to work from and, and that way I can frame up my compositions. I find in climbing photography there's no real guarantees. You've also got to be ready for the, the unexpected. There's always things that you can't control um, that come up in a shoot and the light is is one of the things and you've either got to work with the light you've got or you've got to wait until you, you get the kind of light that you want. I've got to admit I was a very slow uptaker to digital. I was a bit of a die-hard film fanatic and I really love the, the colour gamut that you get with film. It wasn't until the D3 came along with the full frame sensor and the sensor has got such a nice um, colour gamut itself that I started shooting it and I just found it so good for climbing photography. Um, you don't have to stop and change films, you can rattle off nine frames a second. The resolution is just unbelievable. One of the things I do like about the digital as well is that the live view um, can be really handy for getting the camera into positions which would otherwise be a bit too awkward to get the camera to. When I abseiled down before I took a pretty full kit of lenses. I had a 70 to 200, a, uh, a 50, a 35 and a, a 14 to 24 and a 16 millimeter fisheye. So I had a pretty wide selection of lenses there and you know, I had a pretty strong idea about what I wanted to do, the shot that I wanted to get. So I, I knew I wanted to get some close in action and the 70 to 200 was great for that. And I also wanted to get maybe a, a shot showing the whole setting, the whole valley as much as possible. So the 16 I had in mind for that. But uh, you know, I, I didn't want to lock myself in if there's something changed or the, the light. Um, I wanted to have a few options. I mean, it's a lot of effort to come out here and set up and getting some climbers up at 4 a.m. to come out here on a shoot. You don't want to suddenly go, hmm, I wish I had that lens, which I don't have. 
A big part of climbing photography is just getting out there and trying things. The most important thing is to have a bit of an imagination. When you're in a place like this, I'm always looking around, looking across at climbs, trying to think about angles and backgrounds and compositions. And if you spend a bit of time in a climbing area, you'll eventually see things where um, the different elements kind of come together. In climbing photography, it's a lot of effort sometimes to go to a place and get into a position, but go and give it a shot, try it, and you're, you're always learning.